Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's a new year, it really is. And every day is a new day. And when you get that mindset, when you get that attitude, that sort of altered consciousness, a heightened sense of today's a different day. It's a different year. Every day is a different day. In the Our Father, give us this day our daily bread. Uh, Scott Hahn, one of the prominent uh, Protestant Protestant teachers, theologians who converted to Catholicism makes very clear when you pray the Our Father in Greek, our daily bread, the bread in Greek is significant. It is both substantial and spiritual. It's not just wonder bread. In the Greek, it's both substantial and spiritual. And of all the ways you're ever going to be fed, and I mean, I mean fed metaphorically, I'm fed by nature. I'm fed by science. I'm fed by, by your, your cards, your letters, your thanks. Worshiping with you. We're going to be fed in no greater way ever till death than by the gift of the Holy Eucharist. However you can move your life in the new year to be more inspired, more encouraged, more motivated to make Sunday Mass and for those who can make daily Mass the centerpiece and the heartbeat of the deepest manner by which you identify who you are, you will be, in the eyes of God, successful. And in your own estimation, more satisfied and fulfilling. I, I, I love sports, and for, for, for a lot of reasons, entertainment value, but also the idea of motivating people. Good coaches who motivate people. In today's gospel, Herod, it's got the right words, but we just know he's lying. We could say this, we said the same words at a different time in our life. Hey, let's go search diligently for this child. Let's go find this deeper meaning. Is the priest totally off his rocker? It's possible. Or is he pointing to a deeper reality I want to encounter? Our CIA people who are here. There's a deeper reality I live by, I experience, and we're hoping you who are, if you have not already, many of you already have, you continue to want to encounter. And once you encounter it, what's the response? I want to worship. I want to worship. Worship is wired into the human condition. So I think the homily has a couple points. Uh, nature, science, worship, and universality. Remember that. Nature, <laughs> science, worship, and universality. First of all, can you imagine these three astronomers? from Iran. They're from Persia, according to the Old Testament story. These are Persians. They see that these are really wise guys. Not wise guys like, you say a guy's a wise guy like on Grand Avenue. No, not that kind of wise guy. A wise guy like someone really bright and brilliant. A scholar of the day. And they see epiphany. They see something in the sky. Who has seen the, like I'm say it wrong, the Oreal Borealis? Did I say it right? Aurora. Okay, someone gave me a Google check with a nod. Is it Aurora? It's Aurora, I think. Bad Google check. Don't nod your head if I'm making, if I'm saying something false. I count on you people. Go, no, Father, it's Aurora. Anyway, I was in the North Woods, Eagle River, uh, on Clearwater Lake, between uh, Eagle River and Three Lakes. I seen something come out of the sky. Wow, columns of light in fall. Profoundly. Um, Yes, I, I thought the same thing. It was profound, and I thought, God, this, this, this is a, hand, a, a sign of God. This, this is an indication of God's wonder in nature. The star that the three wise men followed, it was a wonder of nature. Victoria Falls, Kauai, we can go on, Zimbabwe, there, there was a great, the, where, where, where poor Cecil lost his life. The Huangue National Park in Zimbabwe, all around the world. There's so many phenomenal natural wonders to just uh, Fiji, scuba diving, that just make you go, whoa, sunsets, sunrises, beautiful lakes, birds singing in the morning. All of that 
It's just, it's, it's, it's great to be sensitive and to be appreciative of the gift God gave to just nature. Now, too many people stop there. They go, well, I don't need to go to church. I go to the woods and I pray. You can't get communion in the woods. You might be in communion with a tree. Go hug that tree. Be one with the tree. But you can't get Holy Communion. So yes, you can worship in the woods. Of course you can. You can worship on the lake. You can worship under the waterfall. You can worship, you know, up in a plane. You can worship underwater. But you can't get Holy Communion there. Don't stop with nature. So these guys were motivated by these signs. But they were also scientists. Scientists. These were scientists. They were men of, of astronomy. Science can be a great help to faith. For too many people, I don't know where they get this from, they say things like, well, science will eventually figure this out. 2015, science cannot answer the question definitively. How did I get here? You think the molecular biologists or the paleontologists or anthropologists or the archaeologists or zoomorology, yes, so, guy, blah, blah, blah. Then you think they would have found it by now. You would, have, you would have thought. You know the problem with the missing link? It's missing. <laughs> you didn't get that one either. It's missing. They can't find it. It's an hypothesis. Science can't answer the deepest question of the meaning of life. Where did I come from? What am I doing here? And where am I going? Religion answers those questions. And we got the most, I got the most, simpl I'm Polish, I got the most simplistic, awesome answer. I came from love. God made me. He made me for a specific purpose. For what purpose were you made? Science can't tell you. God made me to know him more fully. And by knowing him more fully, I will by, by natural uh, uh, choice. I will, I, 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 I shouldn't say that. Some things can know God. The devil knows God. He chooses not to love him. So I just, I just, I'm going to correct myself mid-sentence -set, mid homily. You might know God and still not choose to love him. But if you're doing it right, the more you know God, the more you want to love Him. And the more you want to love Him, the more you want to serve Him and other people. So science can be a great help. These guys were scientists. It didn't stop their faith. They didn't say, oh, let's give up on religion, organized religion, forget organized religion. And I love it, sadly, it's so disconcerting when someone says, I just don't believe in organized religion. How would you prefer, disorganized? We were wired to worship. We were wired in our deepest inner being to give ourselves away to our Creator, to worship. So, nature can help us find God. Science can help us find God. But science can't answer the deeper questions. Religion does. And for all those who mock, who, who walk away, or who shake their fist at the Catholic Church's teachings, Never once has anyone offered a viable alternative to the main principles on which our religion stands. Amen? It's true. I mean, the dignity of human life, our solidarity with the poor, our desire for peace. If anybody kills in the name of who they call God, that cannot be a true religion. It cannot be so. It can, it will not. Our religion is a religion of serving other people. It's a religion of peace. Would, and, and, and don't bring up the Crusades. Because in, in, in the, it's, it's, it's complicated, but the quickest answer was, there was no world police. And Jerusalem's pathways were cut off. And then, the people of Islam unearthed the tomb of our Lord. And said, put the crusades out. Were there abuses? Were there horrible? Yeah, of course there were. Put a bunch of guys together and, and, and send them on a war path? There's going to be collateral damage. I'm, that's sad. It's horrible. We're sorry. It, well, the Pope apologized immediately. The Pope didn't, didn't encourage those behaviors. When he found out, he apologized immediately to the various people who were hurt. But keep in mind, folks, if, the, if, if this is too simplistic, I'm sorry. I'm a simplistic guy. If the United States did not enter World War II, we'd be speaking German or Japanese. If the church did not rise up in the Middle Ages, we'd all be speaking Arabic. I know it's way too simplistic, but I'm a simplistic guy. So these scientists are led by science to do, to do what? To encounter God. Science helps them encounter God. Science and faith are not in opposition. 
The Pope John Paul II looked this up. Fides et ratio. He wrote a paper, what's called an encyclical, a letter, a papal letter. Faith, fides et ratio, faith and reason. The marriage between the two. Faith needs science. We need science. It, uh, people who died of suicide 50, 60 years ago, they weren't allowed to be buried in the church because the church did not have the knowledge. Science had not yet further progressed to understand chemical imbalances and neurological dysfunctions. What, what people thought 60 years ago was, if you took your own life, you obviously committed the most ultimate act of self-hatred. Today, we do not believe that. There could be other forces operative in a person, unbeknownst to us from just examining them uh, empirically. Chemical imbalances, emotional traumas, deep, deep, wounded depression. So now, if someone took their own life by means of suicide, I'm deeply sorry. And the church does their funerals. Science, we needed science. Science uncovered that, neuro, neuro, neuroscientists that help, under, help us understand more. So faith helps, excuse me, science can and does help service the faith. There's never gonna be a discovery, folks. I have the utmost confidence and certitude by my faith. There will never be a scientific find, a discovery, something in a laboratory that's gonna come back and we're gonna change the creed. Or we're gonna change the order of mass. Or there'll be eight sacraments and not seven. Or the unborn child will not have the same amount of dignity as, as you and I here outside the womb. Those things are never, or, or man and woman in marriage. Those things are never going to change. We can have sympathy, we can, we, can, we, can, we can have empathy, but there are certain absolutes that religion gives us. And of them all, the greatest is what the three kings did when they encountered the child. They gave their, opened up their coffers, they gave their time, their talent, their treasure. They prostrated themselves. And they worshipped. You know the story. They were not led by a Hollywood light, a Hollywood star. Too many young people. Stop. New Year's. Come on, folks. Work with me. Limit, limit time on the hand. That thing on your hands. Limit it. I'm calling everybody out on that. That's my New Year's resolution. To call you out. Last time I gave a homily, Christmas Eve, Christmas, one of those days, kids, and I preached against, kid walks out, he bumps into me with a thing in his hand. So I grabbed it. And I, I did this. I, I grabbed it. Not the kid. I thought about it. No, I grabbed the machine and he bellowed, No! It's like his child. No! Don't! Like, like, I, 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 I faked like I was going to break it. Oh, she's looking for what I'm doing. I'm faking like I'm breaking something. So I, I was faking like I'm breaking something. And, and the kid like bellowed. He's like, oh, 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 oh. Father, don't you do scared me. Something's wrong with that kid. <laughs> there might need to be a... I don't have the right to do an exorcism. But the point is, we spent too much time on this stuff. They met the Christ child, they opened up their hearts, their time, talent, and treasure, and they worshiped. I only got one more point. These, guys, these are Persians. If you left believing this, this would be a successful homily. Jesus Christ is not just for Christians. He's for everybody. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life for everybody. There's a universal consequence. There's a cosmic, global consequence to Jesus Christ being Lord. There's a consequence. It should have an effect on all of our lives. We should be proud walking out of this church after receiving Holy Communion, bending our knee, worshiping our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and proclaiming Him boldly outside these doors. And not being afraid to say, with all due respect, I respect you, I respect you, I respect you. Jesus Christ is Lord. Your systems, your philosophies, your science, it will never satisfy you the way my Lord and my God satisfies me. In conclusion, as we come up in communion time, think about giving God more of your heart. It's a new year. Think of, these guys are motivated by science. Think about the inspiration to travel from Persia to Bethlehem by science. You've got faith. You should be more inspired. You should be more animated. You, we should be more motivated to make our God known. So 
uh, thank you again for what, what, what was it, for in sorrow and in, in, in health and in, in, in death and in, in whatever 2015 was for, for you, um, we, we made it. We made it. So let's come at this new year with more animation, more inspiration. I'll, I want to have less perspiration, less of this, and an ever greater openness to the treasures God wants to place in us.